Welcome back to another episode of Linking the Chains, Ball State Football's weekly podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah Rosner. Later on, I will be joined by our guest analyst for this week. That's going to be L.J. Shreve. Uh, for now, though, I do want to recap some of Ball State's crushing loss against Central Michigan. Let's get right into it. Third and goal, looks toward Magwood. Nobody's open. Savanta scampers. He has open daylight, jumps toward the end zone, barrels in, and he is in. Samanza looking left towards the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown. Tanner Cozio. Now caught by Gilly. Breaks one tackle, breaks a second. Malcolm Gilly's off to the races. Malcolm Gilly scores. Thanks for joining me. This is Linking the Chains. We will have interviews coming up as well with Coach Mike New as well as Tanner Koziel. But for now, it's just me. I do want to recap a little bit of what that game looks like. Of course, if you're watching this, you probably did see that game or have at least seen the headlines of, of how it ended up. So not a win for the Cardinals. A loss 37-34 to against the Central Michigan Chippewas. I won't have radio calls this time. Usually we do. Sportslink Digital wasn't able to make it out to this game, out to Michigan for this one. But uh, in general, we'll have those. That said, I do just want to go over uh, kind of how the game went down because it was a really interesting one, a really fun one, especially if you're on the Chippewa side, uh, on the Chippewa rooting side of things. But Ball State started off with a great first drive. I, I thought they were going to score a touchdown, ended up settling for a short field goal up 3-0. And then after Central Michigan turned it over on downs, Ball State looked really good on their ensuing drive, kind of surgically went down that field and scored a touchdown uh, with a six-yard pass from Samanza to go up 10 to nothing. Uh, and these drives took quite a bit of time. So we were already to the beginning of the second quarter, and this is when it started to look really, really promising because Central Michigan had to punt and had their punt blocked by Ball State. A huge play at a early important time in the game ball state has all the momentum right now they're the underdogs in central michigan on the road in quarter number two and they're up 10 to 0 with the ball in central michigan territory after a blocked punt it was looking great uh, but the things uh, things changed pretty quickly you had a turnover on downs they had a fourth and three that they went for it on that's ball state that uh, that, that did that and just passed it complete but just a yard short couldn't quite get to the sticks and so turn it over on downs that led to uh, Central Michigan having quite the explosive drive. They had a 36 yard pass and then capped it off with a 20 yard touchdown run to cut the lead back down to three. Uh, after that, Ball State punts again, and then Central Michigan scores another touchdown to take the lead, another Cardinal punt, and another Central Michigan touchdown. That's three straight touchdowns for the Chippewas. They did miss the th extra point on the third one, so they're up 20-10. to 10, But, man, them coming in being the favorites, it really looked like all the momentum now was with the Chippewas. But uh, the, the pendulum did swing back, though, a little bit. Ball State had a really strong drive uh, to end the half, or at least what you would have thought was to end the half, and scored a touchdown on a 23-yard Malcolm Gilly uh, reception and make it 20-17 to 17 with just uh, 20 seconds to go. But then the first play of the Central Michigan Drive, just a 71-yard run. Not a touchdown, though, they, as they get, get it down to the Ball State 4. And that was big because Central Michigan did end up just settling for a field goal, but still pretty frustrating for Ball State to still allow points at the end in those last 20 seconds and that drive sort of foreshadows what happens at the end of this game but 23 17 and a half time ball state came back though and took the lead with a uh really what i would just say is a Braden sloan drive i mean it felt like every play they were giving it to sloan and he capped it off with a 22 yard touchdown run and and then uh central michigan has a fourth and one they go for it they make it, and then after about a four- or five-yard pickup, fumble the ball, and so Ball State gets it back. They are in their own territory, but uh, a turnover here. The first official turnover to go along with the turnover on downs and really to go along with the blocked punt as well. So uh, a big thing there. Each team punted, and then Ball State extended the lead to four with a nice 40-yard field goal. Carson Holmer good on that one. After that, Central Michigan has a nice drive and scores a touchdown 
with five minutes to play, 30 to 27. Only one pass on that drive. It was all a rushing drive. They had one 17-yard completion. But once again, just lots and lots of running for Central Michigan. And so five minutes to go. Feels like it's near the end of the game. Ball State gets to a fourth and long situation. They say we still have our timeouts. They punt with 3.04 to go. And then Ball State did make the stop. They used their timeouts, got the stop like they like they wanted to. And then Central Michigan made a beautiful punt down to the Ball State three with 159 to play, wasting the two-minute timeout as well. And then Ball State had an absolutely beautiful drive, a 14-yard pass to Magwood. And I, I really I say Ball State, I should say Samanza had an absolutely beautiful drive. Uh, uh, yeah, 14 yard pass to Simonza on the first play to get it up to the 17 yard line. Nine to Koziel, a 13 yard pass to Pickett, and, and you're already up to the, the 39 yard line uh, on your own side of the field. So they, they quickly got out of the shadow of their own end zone. And then the big play, a 45 yard completion to Magwood. Keon Magwood down to the 16, and then the 16 yard touchdown to Tanner Koziel to take the lead right back. A four point lead. With the extra point, I think most Ball State fans feeling really good with a four-point lead with 53 seconds to play in the ball game. But then on first down, Central Michigan, starting from their 25, get a 25-yard run by B.J. Harris to the 50. But, but then on, on the next, the ensuing play, Ball State kind of ups the run defense quite a bit, had the opposite result, a minus six run by B.J. Harris, losing six yards on that play. And then just a two-yard pass to Harris, setting up a third down and 14. And then Evan Boyd gets open for 34 yards down to the Ball State 20-yard line with still 25 seconds to go. The very next play, a 20-yard touchdown pass to Chris Parker with 16 seconds to go. And Ball State's defense just couldn't quite hold Central Michigan at the end. And that they wound up losing that one. So a really frustrating ending for all Ball State fans. Really felt like they had it in their grasp. That was my feeling, at least. I'm assuming that was most Ball State fans and probably most watchers in general feeling that Ball State really had that one in their grasp. But they just couldn't quite do it. Still some great things, though, statistical-wise. Caden Simonza, 30 for 40, 285 yards and three passing touchdowns. No interceptions, took two sacks on the game. Braden Sloan, 19 carries for 94 yards and a touchdown total of 112 yards. And then you also had Kyle Kelly, six carries for 28 yards. They used him quite a bit with various QB rushing packages. So that was fun to watch. Tanner Koziel, nine catches for 112 and a touchdown. A touchdown for Magwood as well on 98 yards. And then a touchdown as well for Malcolm Gilly. Defensively, defensive back Elijah Davis with five tackles, all five of those solo. There, there were three or four at his Ball State players with five tackles, the other ones being George Udo, Keontae Newsom, and Miles Norwood. Brandon Berger, though, two tackles for loss and had the only Ball State sack on the day. On Central Michigan's side, Joe Labas, 14 for 20, 185 yards and a touchdown, also a touchdown pass for Burt Emanuel Jr. on kind of a trick play. That was his only pass of the game, although he also uh, had seven carries for 33 yards and two rushing touchdowns. So how about three total touchdowns for Emanuel? But overall, just a, a back-and-forth game, a, a high-scoring affair. Central Michigan just running the ball. Because, yeah, they, lo looking at, at the yard totals, Totally arched. Ball State 431, Central Michigan 527. But out of Central Michigan's 527 yards, 335 of those came on the ground. That was what won Central Michigan this game. And that is why Ball State fell 37 to 34 to the Central Michigan Chippewas in their MAC opener. Again, a really solid game, a really fun one to watch, just not the result Ball State fans would have hoped. Well, I'm going to play you an interview with Mike New, and after that, we will go into segment two where I will be joined by my analyst for today. But for now, I'll see you soon. This is Linking the Chains. Until I get a chance to watch the film, but I think it was a combination of multiple things. Obviously, we had some hits on guys, and we weren't able – they're bouncing off initial contact and uh, doing some damage uh, after you know, on yards after contact. And at the same time, we had some guys that – um, we're not sound in their assignment, whether they're out of position or out of gap. And uh, obviously, when you do that, um, you're going to give up some big plays. So um, want to see the tape, uh, but obviously uh, starts with with us uh, making sure our guys are in position and they're doing their job. And um, when we get people to the football, we got to be a good tackling team. And, and uh, you know, early uh, several of those, obviously, there were some contact. And then obviously, they did a good job of uh, gaining yards after contact on us. 
that's what you do. It's football, man. And and listen, we got one game at the end of the week. You 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 spend six days preparing for one game, and you want to go out and you want to play as good as you possibly can. I don't. I'm not worried for one second about our team. I fully believe that guys will focus on the positive things that we did today. I feel like they'll rally around each other for sure, making sure they know I still believe in you 100. I still have your back 100. Um, and there's no finger point. You know, you win. Sometimes you, you the, the game is 10 to seven, and sometimes it's a, a game like this. And so they take different shapes um, the way they go. It's not always, man, it's not always going to be a shootout every week, and it's not always going to be a defensive battle. So um, that's his conference, and and um, I, I fully believe that our guys will rally around each other and come back and go to work, and we'll focus on the positive things and clean up the things that need, that need work. Welcome back. Thank you for listening or watching. Uh, I'm now joined by our, our guest analyst this week, LJ Shreve. LJ, thanks for joining. And man, what did you think when Ball State took that lead late in the game yet, uh, last Saturday? You know, that, I, I was very confident. I felt good. Um, it looked like they were going to walk out, out of there with a win. Um, and yeah, the offense looked great, especially on that last drive. Uh, it was exciting football. Sadly, they were unable to walk out with the win. Um, tough break for the defense, but a really fun game to watch and a fun last two drives. Yeah, what, wasn't it kind of like almost foreshadowing at how the, the end of that first half you had the, the 20 second drive by Central Michigan to uh, to end up getting that field goal and nearly a touchdown, and then nearly the same thing happened at the end of the game, but they are able to, to cap it off, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it was just frustrating being a Ball State fan seeing that I, I I was like you even with that even with how the well they'd been running the football I didn't think because it was running I didn't think they would be able to uh, to throw it with with that level of accuracy that quickly down the field and w once we got that uh, or once Ball State I should say got that six yard loss on that one play I, I think second play of the drive after the the, the, the first bigger one I I really felt I really felt good too and and um, it, it was just. An, a, a, cr a crushing loss for Ball State, especially being that the first game of, of conference play. And it would have been so nice to get that win, especially an upset win at Central Michigan, but couldn't quite pull it off. And so, uh, but but overall, man, Caden Simonza, how about his game? He, he's been he's been impressing. I feel like every game, including the one uh, the game two, the the one that against Miami that they lost by quite a bit. Even that one, I felt like he did better than I maybe would have expected at the start of the season. So, what did you think about his performance in this one? Yeah, I thought he played great. Um, you know, first game of con first game of conference play, like you said, uh, throwing seventy five percent throughout that game. Three touchdowns in his first game with no turnovers, um, no interceptions. I felt like you know that's a big step, especially with conference play starting um, and his first conference game on the road as a starting quarterback. That's a that's a big that's a big deal. Three touchdowns, no turnovers. That's an impressive first game. It certainly is. And, and then how about uh, Braden Sloan as well? Another another good one for him. 19 carries, 94 yards. Ended up with uh, a total, well, yeah, he had, he had the, the 18 yards receiving, so 112 yards in total. And, I mean, it, I guess it gets boring to keep talking about him, but Ball State just keeps finding these strong running backs, don't they? Yeah, he as expected, he walked in there and, and performed well. And I expect to see that the rest of the season. Um, you say it gets boring, but, I mean, how can you not talk about him when he's playing at at this level. Yeah, and, and, and then the, the other thing is just, I mean, I talked about the end of the game, but how about at the beginning? Ball State, after that great start, up 10-0, and then blocked the punt, had all the momentum with them. Uh, and then just the way this this game changed with, uh, I assume, were, were you watching it on, on TV like most of us? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so just watching it on TV. Um, and, yeah, it's it, it just, uh, it, we saw some great things out of this Ball State team, I think. We saw great, uh, a great start and then and then great resilience to come back because then uh, you had a a, a big um, yeah 20 to 10 lead for Central Michigan when they got those three straight touchdowns and at that mm -hmm. point it looked like they were gonna run away with it but just a back and forth game and how, how do you how do you come out of this one like like do you how do you come out out of this one as a team feeling the positives instead of feeling like uh, depressed over the loss yeah I think it, it's obviously crushing because of how that game ended and they go down and score and it looks like they're going to walk out of there with a win, especially on the road. Um, you know, you, f you have to find the positives because when you look at the offensive side of the ball, they played pretty well. And then defensively, obviously it's not ideal to let up 37 in general, um, especially um, first game in conference play. But I think there's plenty of positive takeaways. Obviously the ground game was good and the passing game ended up opening some eyes and, 
just putting that offense in a different level and on, on a different tier and something to look forward to um, for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I think there's plenty of things to take away that are positive. Um, but what are the things that, you know, you may have seen that you walk out of there and you're like, these are the biggest things that we need improved on? And it's, it's going to have to be the defense. Um, the defense may not have been as poor as the stats suggested, but I feel like there were just quite a few uh, big, big runs, and it really was the run defense, because overall, I mean, we, we know that last drive was all passing, but, but overall in the game, I mean, what was it? Yeah, 527 total yards for Central Michigan, only 192 of them passing yards, and the 335 rushing yards on the day, and, and it, it didn't feel like, like they were running easily all the time. Ball State had a, a quite a few tackles for a loss. They, they curtailed the rushing attack certainly at times but then you also had times where they would just suddenly break it free so it almost seemed like it depended on uh, that that first level as opposed to the second level the, the, the if, if they got past the those uh defensive linemen i felt like it was it was more the the linebackers and, and secondary that more struggled uh to tackle them is that how you saw it or would you think it was more of the defensive line yeah i think you're exactly right especially once you're able to break away from that initial line of scrimmage th those are the guys outside of the defensive linemen that have to make the plays it's the secondary it's that second tier of the defense that you know you just need to wrap up and tackle and that comes with obviously fundamentals and just practice tackling which a lot of teams don't do as much um in today's era of football uh you know you don't practice as much tackling because you don't want to get injured you know it's a longer season um and you don't want to have those injuries some teams may not have the depth as others um, and so it's tough to be able to practice the fundamentals of tackling, especially in the summer and then leading up to camp and uh, as the first couple weeks of the college football season. So you're going to see that. And I think it's just stuff that they'll be able to improve on as the season goes on. But I think you're exactly right. They need to up their game um, and just wrap up and tackle and make plays. Uh, nothing that needs to be hero ball, but just um, wrapping up and making making just tackles. I think you're right. And LJ, moving kind of back to the offensive side, one stat that I, I really surprised me quite a bit when I saw it after the game, because you know you, you watch a game and then you, you look at the stat line and there's always one or two things that you're like, oh, I, I didn't, I did, that's not what I thought was happening. That's not, I didn't realize that that was the case. And uh, a lot of times it can be a certain player getting more more catches, more yards than, than you remember than you may may have remembered. But for me, it was the time of possession in this one because I was looking at it and I was like, is that right? Ball State 36 minutes 39 seconds, Central Michigan 23 minutes wow. and 21 seconds. So Central Michigan able to put up those 37 points in that little time of possession. And not only that, but they were primarily running the ball. So that that's almost always going to be a huge time of possession. But when the running worked, it was in those explosive runs again, uh, just getting it right down the field. But at the same time, could that be a positive for Ball State's offense to be able to hold on? the ball for that 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 long portion of the game yeah both teams controlled the run game very where very well i'd say um but yeah you throwing that out there that does surprise me especially with how well um central michigan was able to run the football um but i guess it do, it does make some sort of sense when you look at it a little more in depth and see that you know we just talked about the struggle of tackling and so when you're able to break it into the second part of the defense and break away for more than a five yard gain obviously more uh, less time's going to tick off the clock and their offense moved pretty quick um and so yeah it it's not necessarily surprising um when you step back and look at it uh, opposed to when you first look at it and not much of a deep dive um but yeah well, LJ, when we come back, we will talk about JMU previewing that game. Lots of fun things to talk about in that matchup. They got, they've got an explosive offense. But first, we're going to play this interview with Tanner Koziel, the star tight end of Ball State. This is Linking the Chains. You just forget about it. You watch it, you learn from it, and you go to the next thing. Like, you can't lose a game twice. You can only lose it once, and we're just going to go on to JMU. Like, we're going to attack JMU as hard as we possibly can, and we're going to go on and win that game. We could score on every single drive. And I think on every single drive, we had the opportunity to score that game, and we left a lot out there. Uh, we didn't capitalize on the blocked punt, um, and there was just a lot of times where we there was a fourth down we didn't get that we usually should have got. Uh, we want to run the ball. We want to impose our will. And then with Simonza back there, with how we could run the ball, like we're just excited to keep rolling and build on this. Again, this is a year with a new quarterback, a new offensive coordinator. It's not going to be figured out right away, and we know that. But we've put in the work, and we're – seeing the light of it, and we're just going to keep building and only get better from here, which I'm really excited to see because this is just game three. Like, it's a long season to go. Uh, Coach Elliott has instilled that we are an offense that can dominate this conference, and we understand that. And we've seen it in tuition uh, on Saturday, and it's just 
we're ready to go. Like, we want to score every single drive from here on out. There's no reason not to. We deserve to put seven points up on the board after every time we get the ball from our defense. Welcome back to the third and final segment of episode three of Linking the Chains. I'm Isaiah Rosner. I'm joined by our guest analyst this week, LJ Shreve. So LJ, JMU coming up, James Madison University, the Dukes, and they just smacked North Carolina 70 to 50 at North Carolina. How about, how about that result? Yeah, that was eye-opening to all of college football to go on the road in, um, in an ACC opponent that paid you $500,000 to be there and smack them, beat them by 20, the final 70 to 50, a phenomenal performance from the Cardinals' future opponent this week. It, it, it's a little bit intimidating, and especially with the, the struggles on defense Ball State has had. The, the good thing for Ball State is uh, it, they're more of a passing team. I think the passing defense has been the stronger point of the BSU defense. But, man, Alonzo Barnett, the third, 742 yards, seven touchdowns, and just a single interception on the season. Also leads the team in rushing yards, just barely, but he does, with 203 yards. So, man, I, I guess it's kind of the, the obvious question, but how, how, how do you game plan against a, such a dual-threat QB like this? Yeah, it, I mean, it's going to be tough. You have to have some spies um, pretty often, really, to to game plan against someone like him. And it's going to be tough because he can throw a deep ball very well as well. You know, it's not like he's a dual threat that can run, but then also, you know, just make the check down, make the smart reads at all the times. I mean, he has a great deep ball. You saw that a lot this past week. And, um, yeah, I – I really don't know. That's why I'm not a head coach, I guess. Uh, I don't know how you how you plan to stop this guy, and I don't know if you can, really. Well, he had all seven touchdowns in their last game, five of them passing, and then two, the, the only the team's only two rushing touchdowns on, on the day. So, man, it, it was, it's just a, a bit of an intimidating stat to see. But I think the good thing for Ball State is that JMU's defense hasn't been nearly as impressive as their offense similar to the Cardinals. So can Caden Simonza and the Cardinals offense, or I should say how, can they take advantage of that defense? Yeah, you saw in that game last week especially, um, their secondary isn't super impressive. And yes, North Carolina, an ACC team that is well-respected in their conference, um, yeah, you're going to have to look to, to attack the secondary and make plays through the air. And I think that's the way that you're going to beat JMU if there is a way. Um, you're going to have to take advantage of it. And I think naturally that's got to be the game plan because you're going to have to keep up with the offense of JMU. And you say if there is a way, I, I, not, not to suggest you, you meant to be negative or anything, but I, I really think this is a realistic win for Ball State. I, I, I think Miami maybe was a little bit different. I don't want to say they had no chance, but at the same time, I think – most people weren't going into that one thinking, oh, they're, they're going to pull this one off. Whereas this one, JMU is very good. JMU is rightfully the favorite, but I don't think they're, I mean, they're, they're clearly not as much of a powerhouse as Miami or any other team yeah. Ball State has played this season. And so I, I, I really do think Ball State has a good chance in this one. They just have to win the shootout. It'd be great to see the defense suddenly turn it on and, and suddenly become a fantastic defensive unit. But I, I think... The, the the shootout is the way to go. I, I if J, if they can do to the JMU defense what they did to the Central Michigan defense or even close to that, they should have a really good chance of at least making this a close game because they they can run it, they can pass it. Ball State can do all sorts of things. They have a, a dynamic quarterback package even with Kyle Kelly. He's had some games where he's done more than others, but mm -hmm. it's just been a lot of fun to watch this Ball State offense and. I, I could see the, the, the wide receivers going wild on this JMU secondary. How about you? Yeah, I, I completely agree, and I, I'm glad you clar clarified um, what I was saying because, yeah, I, I do think this is a game that will be more competitive and a realistic win for, for the Cardinals. Um, and like I said, a, a much more competitive game than I think most people would think. Um, like you said, both offenses are electric, and I, I think the way to go has got to be the shootout. For sure. JMU hasn't played a, a Sun Belt game yet. Uh, Ball State, of course, just played their first Mid-American Conference game with that loss to Central Michigan. Again, 37-34. Heartbreaking loss for your Cardinals. But JMU 3-0 and on the season. And that, that again, that looks, I've used the word a few times, intimidating. That looks scary at first. But their other two wins are against Charlotte and Gardner-Webb. So I, I, I do think outside of the, the North Carolina win, I, I don't want to take it lightly. 70-50, to huge result. At, at NC, 
you can't take that lightly if you're Ball State. But at the same time, that's the only game where they've truly proven themselves. Because the, the other two games are uh, against just in general lesser opponents. Uh, lesser opponents, opponents Ball State could beat. And so uh, part of me also wonders if we're too early in the season still. I mean, we are we are three, f well, four weeks in, but three games in for each of these teams. But part of me wonders if it's even too early in the season to really make any conclusions about what this game will be like. Yeah, and those previous games that JMU played, it wasn't near as impressive as the North Carolina win. You saw JMU pretty limited um, in their offense with their targets. Um, they Now, last week, they spread it out um, a lot more than they have this season. And so, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be very competitive and a real test, um, a real, like, realistic test for Ball State as it's on the road. Um, JMU is a tough place to play. They have a great environment and a great um, crowd that's going to be out there. But I do think this is a realistic win. We saw them compete last week on the road. And so I don't think there's any reason for the Cardinals to walk in there and not have confidence. Now, I, I'm going to ask you, I'll answer it first, but I'm going to ask you, what do you think is the number one thing Ball State needs to do to win that game outside of just passing all over them. Let, let, let's say number one thing defensively, and I, I mean I'm going to kind of take the easy answer, the easy way out here. So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll give you the tough job there, LJ. But uh, for me, I'm just going to say it's going to be it's going to all come down to the run defense because I, I mentioned how good their passing is, but again, this is yet another opponent Ball State's going to play, who is their fourth opponent of the season, who. It's a pretty balanced attack on offense. Uh, 742 passing yards, 567 rush yards on the season. That includes both their quarterback and their running back, uh, George Petaway, rushing the ball. And so th they can do both, but I really think I, I trust Ball State's pass defense, particularly with the pass rush. I think the pass rush has been very solid this season, maybe not elite, but very, very solid. And so I think if they can figure out a way to keep this run running offense in check. And that doesn't mean hold them to under 100. It just means hold them to under maybe 250. You know, don't let them run all over you. If, if, if you can keep that, if you can make that happen, I truly do think Ball State has a good chance in this one. And so now, of course, your turn, LJ. What would you say is the number one thing defensively for Ball State to do? Yeah, I'm going to kind of look at this a little different. Um, I'm going to say Ball State needs to make JMU's run game beat them. Because um, we've talked about how good their secondary is. Um, and so if Ball State's secondary is able to play up to that challenge um, on the road at JMU against a good wide receiver core and a good quarterback, if, you're gonna, if you can make the running back beat you, I think that's how you walk out of there with a win. You emphasize um, the coverage and the pass um, defense. And if they run all over you, I, I think your offense has a chance at pulling it out. Well, that will just about do it for episode three of Linking the Chains. Thank you for joining us. He's LJ Shreve. I'm your host, Isaiah Rosner. Also, thank you to Kay Johnson, our on-site technician. But that will do it. We'll see you next time. Two seconds and one, and Bull State will walk home victorious. Linking the Chains is hosted and produced weekly by Isaiah Rosner. This has been a production of Ball State Sports Link.